Good afternoon, boys and girls. Uh, sometimes I read in the morning, sometimes I read in the afternoon, sometimes I read in the evening. And I know the same is true for your listening. Sometimes it's in the morning, afternoon, or evening, and that's fine. Uh, we are continuing with our domain three, the human body systems and senses. And we're going to really delve into some of the senses today. Uh, we want to review and make sure that you remember that human body systems are all interconnected like a complicated machine. What is the name of the systems that you have learned about so far? We have the skeleton, the muscular, and the nervous systems. Today, we're going to be learning about the eye and how it is hidden inside the skull. There are different parts of the eye that work together to, to allow you to see. The eye itself is a complicated machine. Remember that from the very first moment that you open your eyes in the morning, we use our vision to help us get around. Our vision helps keep us safe by helping us avoid bumping into objects, walking into traffic, and so forth. Also, many of the observations that you make and that scientists make are visual. We see things and we can see the similarities or the differences and classify at animals according to those similarities and differences. Those are called observations, and that's a very important part of the learning process for scientists. If you, I I'm going to pause this movie, and I want you to go, I want you to pause it. Go look in the mirror and look at your eye and see what parts of the eye you already know the names of. Pause the movie and then come back. I bet you knew the eyelid, eyelashes, your eyebrow. You might know about your tear duct. That's that little tiny hole that's in the very corner that causes tears to drain back down into your nose and makes you sniffle when you cry. At least it makes me sniffle when I cry. Your iris and your pupil. You know, we're gonna be studying these human systems and senses, and there are things on the outside that are easily seen, like the eyelashes, and those are called external body parts. But there are also things on the inside of your body, like bones, that cannot be seen without the help of machines like x-rays, and those are called internal body parts. That is a really important difference, internal, external, and we hear the root word and we also hear prefixes. Third graders need to really know these prefixes. In means inside, ex means outside. You think of exit and that's how you get outside. So that ex means out, in means in. And it's really great when you start to learn these prefixes and what they mean, it opens up tons of vocabulary for you. It's really cool. Well, today we're going to learn about both the internal and the external parts of the human eye. Imagine a typical day. You're always looking around at people and books and screens. You're looking at animals and cars and trees. Before crossing a street, you look both ways for traffic. What part of the body do you use to look at all these things? Your eyes, of course. And which body organ do you think helps your eyes to see? If you only had your eyes, you wouldn't be able to see anything. You have to have a wonderful brain as well. Human eyes work together with the brain in order for you to see. 
If you didn't have eyes, you wouldn't be able to see. If you didn't have that part of your brain, you wouldn't be able to see. You have to have both. Of all of your senses, your sense of sight is the one that you use the most. More than half of all the information you collect from your environment is received through your eyes. Then the information is sent to the back of your brain, sometimes called the mind's eye, where your brain interprets what you see and creates a picture for you. Why do you think that you get half of the information that you collect from your environment from your eyes? Well, think about your hands and how you collect information from your hands. Spread your hands in front of you and to the sides of you and as far back as they will go. That's as far as you can touch. And so if you are going to get information by touching something, it has to be right next to you in order to be able to touch it. But with your eyes, you can see things that are close up. You can see things that are in a classroom, but you could see things if you went outside and you stood on the top of a mountain, you could see things for literally hundreds of miles away. So you're getting information from very, very far distances with your eyes. I think that might be one of the ways why you get 50% of all the information from your environment, from your sight. Remember when we looked at different parts of the skull? <clears throat> the cranium that houses your brain is only one part of your skull. Besides the eight flat cranial bones, there are 20 additional skull bones. Some of these bones form the eye sockets, two holes that are the perfect size for housing and protecting your eyeballs. Before we take a look at the eyeball, let's look at what surrounds your eyes. There are other things that also play an important part in helping you see. If you can, turn and look at your neighbor, but if your neighbor is not in class with you, go to where you can see a mirror. See the hairs above your eyes? What are those called? Your eyebrows. And they're not just there to look pretty. They have a purpose. Do you know what they do? Your eyebrows help keep dust and sweat out of your eyes. Now, close your eyes. What is the skin called that covers your eyes? Your eyelids. Your eyelids protect your eyes too. They keep your eyes moist by spreading tears over them. Tears are produced by tear glands located above each eyeball on the underside of the eyelid. These salty water droplets keep your eyes wet and help fight germs. Tear ducts are tiny raised bumps located in the inner corner of your eyes containing openings no larger than a pinhole. These tiny openings are the drains for your tears. Your eyelashes, that short curved hairs growing on the very edge of your eyelids, they help keep dust particles out as well. <clears throat> there are muscles all around each eye. You have six in all. They control your eyes' movements, allowing them to swivel in their sockets, looking up and down and side to side. Now we're ready to take a peek at the parts of the eyeball itself. Look at your eye again. What shape is your eye? It may appear oval to you, but the eyeball is actually well named because it is round, just like a basketball. It looks oval because some parts are hidden behind the eyelids. What color are your eyes? What color are your family's eyes? Are, are everybody's eyes the same color in your family? Not in my family. Did you notice what color they are? Look again. Does anybody know the name for the colored part of the eye? In my family, I have... Uh, green eyes, brown eyes, blue eyes, and almost black, black eyes. These are dark brown, but boy, my little grandson, he has dark, 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 dark black eyes. I have sort of a combination of green and uh, this color. 
So that's sort of hazel when you have a combination. <clears throat> Let's look up close. Hold on just a second. Sorry for the interruption. Somebody was stuck outside in the rain and needed to come through my door. <laughs> um, we're going to take a look at this picture. And it's going to give us some really good information about the external parts of the eye that you can see. The outer visible part of the eye includes the sclera, the cornea, the iris, and the pupil. The white outer layer of the eye is called the sclera. The thin, tough, transparent tissue that covers the colored part of the eye is called the cornea, and it allows light to pass through. You'll need to know what transparent is for that to make sense. Transparent means something is see-through. It's clear, and you can see through it. Together, the sclera and the cornea protect the eye from germs, dangerous particles, and damaging light rays. The colored part of the eye, the disc located just behind the transparent cornea, is called the iris. At the center of the iris, there's a black circle. Do you see it? This dark circular hole, called the pupil, varies in size as it regulates the amount of light entering the eye. So the pupil, the black part, actually is a hole. It's covered by the cornea, okay, but the iris gets, is a muscle that contracts and gets smaller or bigger depending on the amount of light that needs to enter the eye. The muscles of the iris control the size of the pupil, tightening to make the pupil smaller in bright light and relaxing to make the pupil larger in dim light. How cool is that? And here you can see a small pupil because it's light and a large pupil because it's darker out and the eye needs more light to see. External, internal. You can only see clearly if the right amount of light enters your eyes. Eyes are designed to focus light. Every part of the eye has a role to play, including those parts that lie inside the eyeball. So what is inside the eyes? Liquid and jelly. That's right, eyes are soft and hollow. The clear fluid and jelly inside them gives them their round shape. There are three important parts inside the eyeballs that help you see. The lens, the retina, and the optic nerve. Okay, so here are some things that are on the outside of the eye. Remember we had the cornea, and the, here's this white part of the eye, the sclera. The iris is the muscle, the pupil is a hole, but behind the pupil is a lens. At the very back of the eye is a retina. It's just the back of the eye, comes up here as well. This is the optic nerve. You know what a nerve is. It carries messages back and forth to the brain. So if a nerve carries messages back and forth to the brain. Where is this going? From the eye to the... Yes, it's going to the brain. You're right. In order to see, you need light. It can be natural light from the sun, or it can be an electric light from a bulb, but all seeing begins with light. The eye sees objects by seeing the light that reflects or bounces off objects. Ding, 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 super important. Let me say it again. 
the eye sees objects by seeing the light that reflects or bounces off objects. Imagine that you're looking at a house. The sun shines down on the house. Light from the sun bounces off the house and travels to your eyes. Light rays bend toward each other as they pass through the cornea, the transparent tissue that covers the iris. This bending is the first step in focusing the light. The bent light rays then pass through the pupil to a clear disc called the lens. The rubbery flexible lens adjusts its shape in order to focus on near or distant objects, creating crisp images. As the light rays pass through the lens, they bend even closer, cross one another, and land on a cup-shaped retina at the back of the eye. An image of the house is formed on the retina, but because light rays are bent, the image appears upside down on the retina. The light receiving cells of the retina transfer light rays into electrical energy so that the nervous system can send information to your brain via or by the optic nerve. The short, thick optic nerve is fixed to the back of the eyeball just behind the retina. Acting like a cable, it passes through a tunnel in the skull and connects the eyeball to the brain. You were so smart to figure that out earlier. The optic nerve carries messages to the brain to be processed. The brain recreates the image so that the house is now seen right side up. As the eyes work together with the nervous system, the whole process takes less than one second to complete. Wow. Eyes are so important to us that it is troubling when things go wrong with our eyes, preventing us from seeing as well as we would like. Two of the most common eye problems are nearsightedness and farsightedness. Have you ever heard of those terms before? Well, let's find out what they mean. <clears throat> Take a look at this top picture. We know that people come in all shapes and sizes. You can look around. Legs and arms and faces and heads are all different shapes and sizes. So it makes sense that eyes vary in shape and size from person to person, too. The size and shape of the eye affects its ability to focus light and work well. In perfect vision, as light rays pass through the lens of the eye, they meet at just the right place to project a clear image on the retina. But sometimes the cornea or the lens is not quite the right shape to bend the light in the most effective way. Sometimes the shape of the eyeball affects how clearly images are projected on the retina. When these things occur, vision may become blurry. <clears throat> so here, I can see the people clearly, but in the background, I can't see what's going on in the background very clearly. This says I am near sighted. I can see up near. Here, I can't see these people super clearly, but I can see in the background really, really clearly. I can't see the near, but I have good far sightedness. I can see far away. I have far sight. Here I have near sight. How many of you wear glasses? Well, my hand is up in the air. How many of you wear contacts? Okay, some of you might wear contacts. <clears throat> I am near sighted, which means I can see things up near. I don't see very far very well from far away. Here's what happens with my eyesight because I am nearsighted. In nearsightedness, the eyeball size in relation to the cornea affects its focusing power. So images are projected or focused in front of the retina. It's not even touching these cells that are going to take a good picture and send it to the brain. 
Nearby objects are seen clearly, but distant objects are out of focus. <clears throat> in farsightedness, the eyeball size affects the focusing power of the lens, so images are projected or focused behind the retina. Distant objects are seen clearly, but nearby objects are out of focus. Luckily, these problems can both be corrected with glasses or contact lenses. So I have a double lens. I have a lens that's held in the frame of my glasses out here, which is going to correct how the light bends as it goes through my cornea and the lens and to be reflected right back here on the retina in the perfect spot so that I can see up near and I can see far. Before I go, here's a riddle or two. I reflect off objects and enter your eyes. I bend to help you see. Your sight depends on me. What am I? I am light. Objects appear upside down on me. I live at the back of your eyeball. What am I? I am the retina. I am the part of your eye that is colored. Sometimes I'm green, but I could be brown or gray or blue or black. What am I? I am the iris. Okay, it's time for me to go. Next time we'll look at the smallest bone in your body. Hmm, that'll be interesting. But before we go all the way, I'd like to go over some questions. There are five senses. What are they? Sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. How do these senses work with the brain to produce information about our surroundings? Well, information about the environment is collected through the senses and it is sent back to the brain to help interpret it. So some questions about the eye. What are the visible or external parts of the eye? Let's scoot back there because this is really important. The visible external parts of the eye are the eye sockets, eyebrows, eyelids, eyelashes. You can see the white sclera. You can't see the cornea because it's clear, but you can tell it's there. Sometimes it reflects the light, just like this light is being reflected here. It looks like a window is being reflected on this eye. The iris and the pupil. What's the purpose of the visible parts? Well, eyebrows and eyelashes help keep dust away and sweat and other particles. Eyelids and tear ducts help to keep the eyeball moist, and the pupil controls how much light enters the eyeball. The sclera and the cornea protect from germs, particles, and light rays. Eye sockets are the house and protect the whole eyeball. What are the inner or internal parts of the eye? The lens the retina, and the optic nerve. Compare and contrast nearsightedness and farsightedness. In nearsightedness, you can see things that are near. You have near sight. You don't see things that are far away very well. In farsightedness, you can see things that are far. You have far sight, but you can't see things that are up close. If you were an optometrist, how would you help people deal with the challenges of nearsightedness and farsightedness? Well, you have to know what an optometrist is. An optometrist is a doctor who can fit you, figure out where they need to bend the light in the front of your eye so that when it goes through your actual eye, it will land right on the retina 
and you'll be able to see clearly. They'll do that with contact lenses or with eyeglasses. How do the parts of the eye work together with the nervous system to allow a person to see? This is complicated and we tried to keep it as simple as possible. Light travels through the cornea. As it passes through, it bends. The bent light passes through the pupil. The lens bends the light again to finish focusing the image. This light lands on the retina where the light is transferred to electrical energy so the optic nerve can send information to the brain. Let's look at it again. Here's how the light works. Light bounces off an object. It travels through the cornea through that, and that bends the light. And then the bent light passes through the pupil to the lens. The lens bends the light some more to focus the image on the retina where the light is transferred to electrical energy so the optic nerve can send information to the brain. Would you describe that process as wondrous, full of wonder? I do. I think it's amazing. Why is it very important to take care of and protect your eyes? Well, our sight is the most frequently used sense, and we gather a great deal of information through the sense of sight. Um, your sense of sight is the one that you use the most. How does the sense of sight help you on a daily basis? What does it help you to do, the fact that you can see? 